quick rundown on inference and why I think it's important enough to have a category to itself on YourSignals.com. Um, what you're going to see is a, a common way to enumerate the presence of an email address on a platform. I say that carefully. I don't say person. I say email address uh, on the platform because any platform that takes an email address or even a phone number um, is uh, the the chances are very high currently that um, you can infer and deduce that somebody that might use or own that email address is actually using the platform or service that you're inferring from. I hope that makes sense. Um, in simpler terms, we're going to see by using either a user sign up or sometimes a password reset uh, if the um, account already exists. And if it already exists, then it can only exist. Uh, it can only exist if the account is present on that application. So if um, the Pope at the Vatican dot com, Leanne's messaging me. If the Pope at the Vatican dot com has an account on uh, 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 Pornhub dot com, then maybe the Pope's maybe the Pope has an account on on Pornhub. Um, obviously that that's variable on each web application or s online service because the account uh, validation process might be weak it might be non-existent or it might be very thorough but um, it's uh, it's some information it could suggest that the Pope had been hacked uh, you know like each each service that comes with its own context that you need to consider but generally inference can be quite useful at scale um, for uh, originally I wanted to use this as a fraud mechanism where if somebody was signing up to an account with their email address we could um, we could what I was calling uh, social presence we could fingerprint social presence because we could say has that email address been seen on any of these other services and then we would use similar techniques to enumerate those services or we would search for that email address in historical uh, data breaches or you know stuff like that and then it would assert it wouldn't be a hundred percent but it would assert that um you know the owner of that email address has made a considered effort to to um, create a social profile and that's not usually what bot accounts do yet <laughs> and that's because they've got to compete with various um online services defenses against bots um, and that's normalizing and getting harder for bots to succeed in but still you know um it's a cat and mouse game with security and automation and um, mitigations and controls, so on and so forth. Anyway, so in this video, uh, we're simply going to um, go to the Twitter sign up page. So there is a, a very, uh, there's an even simpler way of doing this, but I figured a visual way of doing it is even easier. So you can do it by phone number, or you can do it by email. In our case, we're going to do email. Now, I don't really have a Twitter account that I'm active on anymore, but I do have an account that I've created for your signals just because I thought it might turn into something and if it does then it'd be worth having a Twitter presence but I, I had to come away from Twitter because I was arguing with too many dickheads that's right, you're all dickheads, Twitter people apart from my friends obviously anyway, so, um, so if I put in carol at yoursignals.com in the background it's sending a message to Twitter and saying um, does this account already exist on our system it says the email address has already been taken. What it should say, well, I mean, the real way for this to happen, it should say nothing and send an email to that email address and say, have you forgotten that you have an account or have you forgotten your password or, or reactivate your account or any of that sort of stuff. But just so from that, we can see that it's already been taken. So we can we can infer that, um, that I have a Twitter account using yoursignals.com. Uh, which is, if, if you know that that's attached to me, then you might be like, oh, you know, maybe um, what what old passwords does John use? Or, you know, all of that sort of good stuff to an attack. Or, or maybe even adding that email account to your address book and then letting Twitter try and connect us together to, to sort of present which account, um, which Twitter account I might that email address might be associated with. Obviously, it's the Your Signals Twitter account, but, you know, somebody political or, um, or otherwise might have a, a different email address and you might be able to learn the connection through um, through Twitter processing the Twitter account so say for example there was an account called John's a dick which there's probably many if they know me um, and it was um, maybe an ex-girlfriend or or, um, or an ex-housemate uh, or, or something um, 
and I put their email addresses in my address book and then I, I um, let Twitter synchronise my address book. It might say, hey, do you know John's a dick? And I'm like, well, actually, my address book only has two people in it. Uh, so I reckon it's this person or that person or, you know, it, it, there's ways to sort of retrospectively um, uh, create indications, uh, inference, whatever. So some good utility here. Um, now, this looks quite straightforward and you might be thinking, well, I want people to know that I'm on Twitter because the whole point is to have followers and audience and, and broadcast to those people, blah, blah, blah. That's true. I agree. Um, some of this stuff that you might want to, like, if we if we look at this on a bigger picture, so let's scale it. Let's say that we can uh, use it for fraud. Let's say that we can throw lots and lots of email addresses across lots of different systems. Let's say that we're um, doing those individual requests from random IP addresses uh, the same way that bots do, so it's quite difficult to to measure on um, and defend against. Let's say that that happens. Um, let's say that uh, it's a abortion clinic and now there's a list of uh, email addresses from people that uh, you know uh, might get in trouble if they've if they've been identified as having anything to do with an abortion clinic, whether it's from their belief systems or their family or uh, an area of the country that they live in, uh, in or in a country where abortions are still, you know, um, quite um, quite dangerous uh, in terms of not the actual procedure themselves or the the freedoms that a woman should have to decide to to have that procedure, but more about the um, the stigma attached culturally or legally or, or whatever there's some fucking stupid cunts in the world so i shouldn't say cunts stupid people in the, in the world um you know still still against f uh, those kind of freedoms anyway um so that would be a, a negative implication uh, implementation of of this kind of scenario um maybe a positive one would be bouncing a lot of email addresses off some like shitty Nazi websites or, you know, um, very, very toxic websites to, to identify owners or associates uh, or, you know, all of that sort of vigilante stuff, which sometimes I'm okay with, but most of the time I'm like, this should be for the police, um, but then arguably if the police haven't got the resources or the police are, um, in the UK at least, the police are um, very low on resources and they might not be interested in that or in America if the police are too busy shooting black people to do actual police work then that's a problem too but um, so I, I think that vigilante stuff um, you know handle it delicately and if you are gonna if you are interested in this stuff or you're excited about how you might be able to apply this uh, this sort of technique and um, just you know, if you think that you're gonna get some people into some trouble, whether you uh, love them or hate them, it may be worth seeking some advice, like from some of your more sensible friends. Like, you, you know, there's a lot of smart people out there, but there are also a lot of stupid smart people out there too. But again, it's really about how you apply this, similar to penetration testing tools or hacking tools. You know, you can you can download some tools and you can demonstrate that something can be hacked, or you can go around hacking people and try to steal money off old women that don't know better, or old men that don't know better, or you know, blackmailing people, uh, or you know, all that sort of scammy shit. Anyway, so I think that you've been looking at this Twitter page for a long time now and hearing me chatting shit. But I think that's enough to get started. I think there's some good context and I think there's a good demonstration. Um, I, I'm happy to do visual guides. Um, I, I'm happy to sort of do technical stuff if you wanted to look at in like the post requests that are happening in the background. Um, I'm not much of a programmer, so I won't be able to help build anything, but I could participate if anybody fancies it. Um, but uh, what I'm really interested in is combining this method with um, uh, the address book method, which I'll, I'm trying to figure out the best way to to demonstrate. Uh, Bellingcat did a really good demonstration, actually. Maybe I'll just reference theirs. Um, but I think with that, with the address book problem and this combined, and you're probably thinking, what is the address book problem? I'm sorry, um, I'll have to give you something to read on that too, because um, I don't want to deviate too much from this topic. Uh, of inference through email or phone numbers on online services. Right, I'm chatting shit now. I'm going to shut up, but there you go.